as I'm, he's telling me the story, it keeps getting worse and worse and worse. I feel like I'm in a, I'm, I'm in a lifetime movie. Cause this person who had killed him wasn't supposed to be on the road that day. Well, first of all, when I'm connecting, I kept hearing a gunshot. So who was shot here in the physical? Jesus, my father. He's, dead. He's here. I heard a gunshot go off when I connected with you. I saw your father and then I also heard accident. From what we know is um, uh, there was a car accident and the guy who they got in a car accident with wasn't too happy with it and he wound up shooting him. First of all, where were you guys from? I didn't even ask you where you're from. We're from Florida. Oh, what part uh, of Florida? North Florida, but we're originally from New Jersey. Um, we moved here from New Jersey. That's where all that happened at. Well, first of all, I got to tell you that your father is stepping forward because the first thing that he wants to let you know is that he goes, I am so sorry about how my son's life had changed. Because the moment that your dad was shot, not only did you have to bear that news, but he tells me that right away, you stepped forward and you started taking care of your family. And your father says to me that he wants to thank you. He says for every single thing that you did for everyone, because you had to grow up so quickly and you had to take on such responsibility so quickly when he had passed away. And your dad says to me, listen, he says, Matt, he goes, I'm so upset. He says that my son is so hurt by this because you feel like you missed out on all of these years with your dad. But I'm going to tell you something, your father's here in spirit right now. And when I'm looking at him, I feel like I'm looking right at you. You <laughs> look just like your dad. Absolutely. And he goes, Matt, he goes, my son is like me in so many different ways. He actually tells me that when he was here in this world, your father was very smart and he was, he was very hands, hands on. He shows me what I'm connecting with him because he actually tells me there was actually still tools that were kept of your father's. <laughs> Did yes. you have these tools? Yes, we have them for a long, long time. And what was this obsession with your dad and flashlights? Did he always have flashlights everywhere? Because he showed me when I'm connecting with him, like flashlights everywhere. And he's saying to me, Matt, he goes, they even kept my flashlights he's showing me. They almost look like military flashlights. Oh, yo, Jesus, yes. We have all his military gear. Absolutely. What is, oh, so those, those were military flashlights. Yes, yes. He showed me this, <laughs> like, I don't know what this is. And he showed me these heavy, big metal flashlights that he's acknowledging. Yes, yes. We have, we had all his military gear and flashlights were part of it. Absolutely. This is so crazy because your father was murdered. Yes. And as I'm, he's telling me the story, it keeps getting worse and worse and worse. I feel like I'm in a, I'm, I'm in a lifetime movie because this person who had killed him wasn't supposed to be on the road that day. There was this issue with them not supposed to be on the road because they didn't have the right documentation. He's telling me. Yep, absolutely. He didn't have a license. Um, he just was released from prison too. On top of that, because your father says to me, he "Goes Matt, this person should have never been on the road." And you know what's crazy? I know why your dad was killed. Because I'm saying to your dad, were you aggressive? Did you come out of the car? Were you mad? Were you upset? Why did why did this happen? Not that I'm taking this other person's fault. I'm just asking questions to get to the bottom. Yeah. And your father said to me, Matt, no, I wasn't like that. He goes, I came out, I was calm. The reason why your dad was killed is because that man knew that he was gonna go back to prison. Wow. He killed your father because he thought that by killing him, he wasn't going to have to go back. He thought he may have been able to, uh, to avoid the police or evade the police. Oh, my Jesus. So your father says to me, he goes, Matt, he goes, I need to let my son know. He says that what was done for, to me was so wrong. He says, I didn't even know what happened. Your father says to me, he wasn't in pain. He didn't even know what had taken place. It all happened so quickly. He says, you know, he got out of the car. Your dad didn't even see a gun. He All he remembers was hearing the, the noise. And then next thing you know, waking up in, in, in heaven. But he says to me, from the moment that he died, he's been watching over you. And that's what's so- I know. <laughs> I know, yes. <laughs> he says to me, and your father is able to see your life now, your family, and everything that you built. And your father says to me, you have made me so proud of you. He says, so there's one thing that he's acknowledging. As he says to me, please let my son know that I am in spirit. He says to me, and at the end of the day, he says, the justice is that I am at peace. The justice is that I'm able to watch over him every day and that nobody can hurt me, harm me. He says, and I don't care about what happened to me. He says, because I know that I can watch over my son now. I can know I can watch over his family. And your father says to me, I love you so much. So thank you for everything that you did for me. Thank you for the love that you gave me. Thank you for watching out for the family. He says, and know that I am here. Awesome. Thank oh, wait, there's one other thing. Yeah. Your father's telling me, and you get this from him, because he used to do this in his spare time. He tells me, what's the connection with you and planting? Are you trying to do a garden? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, my, my mother 
was a huge gardener and I, you know, I took on that plant, took on building a garden in my backyard and I have like the biggest garden in the world. Because <laughs> your father's going to me, oh my God, Matt, he's like, look at the size of those tomatoes he's going to me. He's saying to me, he's been obsessed with the garden and he's telling me. Yeah, it's something I took up for my mother and my mother is very strong connected to him. So know that they're both here because your mother is and your father is saying they're watching over the garden on the other side and you get it from them. So know that when you're gardening, they're telling me that you're talking to your father. You're talking to your mom. Like that's your, that's your safe place where you go to feel connected to your loved ones. Do you understand that? Yeah. So when you're gardening and you're, and you're in there and you're planting the, the plants and the seeds and whatever it is that you do, I don't garden because I'm here in Rhode Island I like, and, and you know I, I don't get my hands dirty. I don't have time to garden. I'm talking to dead people all the time. But know that one of the things is that that's your father's way of acknowledging that he sees what you did, that there's still a part of it with you and that this is just proof and validation that they're with you every day. That's awesome. I'm going to leave you with that. Thank you so much, Matt. <laughs>